it's midnight. It is the middle of the night that's often referred to as a, a time of darkness. 12 o'clock at night. Many are asleep at midnight, but yet there are many who lie in bed awake, perhaps with tears streaming down their faces because of the turbulence that they are experiencing in life. Why? It's because life happens. Life happens to us all. There are days when life is great, but there are times in our life when life is very difficult and it feels like a midnight. Someone today has lost a loved one and you're feeling a depth of loneliness that you've never felt before. And you feel a helplessness because of the inability to bring that loved one back. And it's left you with an unconsolable sadness and a void. And you wonder if you will ever be healed. It's midnight. And yet someone else has received a diagnosis and the prognosis does not look good. And you worry and fret, wondering what the future holds or will there be a future? It's midnight. Another is dealing with the pain of divorce. You have been rejected and abandoned. And you had all your hopes and dreams built on sharing the rest of your life with your spouse. But your spouse decided to walk away and left you feeling alone. And you have questions of what happened or what should you do next. It's like part of you have has died and the hurt and pain of a loss of that promise of being together forever has left you wounded and it feels like a pain that's more than you can bear. It's midnight. Someone's child has gone astray and you know you raised them right and you know you taught them good morals and good values. You lived a good life and set a good example for them. And you tried to be the best parent you could be, and yet for some reason your child has chosen a different path, not living up to their potential, breaking the law, using drugs, and some have become addicted and they're in and out of prison and you lay awake at night and you wonder why and the tears stream from your eyes and it's midnight still someone else is struggling they're in the struggle financially you watched your car be repossessed in this time of inflation. You watched your home be in foreclosure and you're struggling trying to make ends meet and you feel like you're drowning. These are the midnights that many face and it causes stress, it causes anxiety, it can cause depression and insomnia because you feel hopeless. You feel weak and you can't see your way. Things look dark. 
and it's midnight and you're wondering what to do during this midnight in your life. Well, I want you to know that midnight is the moment when one day ends and the next day begins. Let me say that again. Midnight is the moment when one day ends and the next day begins. And there are things you can do at midnight, at that moment of midnight, to empower yourself so that as one day ends, you can begin the next day with a hope, with strength, with deliverance that only God can give. You're asking, how do you get there? I want to submit, you pray and you praise God in your midnight. For when the praises go up, that's when God's blessings come down. And God inhabits the praises of his people. Psalm 22, verse 3. Psalm 113, verse 3 says, From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. So pray and praise at midnight. Now, I know you don't feel like doing it, but the joy of the Lord is your strength. And if you're going to make it through your midnight, you need strength. So I want someone today to give God a crazy praise and talk to God. It feels better than feeling depressed and in despair and living without hope. You're going to praise God for a better day. You're going to expect better. You're going to claim better. And you're going to believe God to bring you out. You're going to come out with a praise and a prayer that you have a testimony that yes, God is real and that you feel God deep down in your soul. Well, in the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 16 through 40, you will find a story about the Apostle Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas were going to the synagogue to pray. They did this daily. But while they were going to pray, there was this woman who had a spirit in her. She was like a fortune teller. And she brought a lot of money um, uh, forth for her masters by her fortune telling. And she would see Paul and Silas and she would mock them every day saying, look, behold, these are the servants of the Most High God. And she would mock them every day. And one day, Paul got so tired of it that he said, I command thee in the name of Jesus, uh, he spoke to the spirit to come out of her. And so that spirit of divination came out of that lady and she could no longer tell her fortunes 
which caused her masters to lose the money, the money that they were making off of her fortune teller. And they were upset. And they brought Paul and Silas before the magistrates and told them that these men are exceedingly trouble in our city. They're just teaching things, customs and things that's unlawful. And the magistrates rose up, tore off Paul and Silas's clothes and commanded that they be beaten. And when they had beat Paul and Silas so much that they laid many stripes upon them, it's like their flesh was torn. They threw them into prison and charged the jailer to keep them safely. They thrust them in the innermost part of the prison so that they could not get out. And they put stocks on their feet. And there Paul and Silas stood. And the scripture says it was midnight. Now they had every reason to be upset because they were just going to the synagogue to pray. And they had just rebuked the devil out of this woman. And now they find themselves in pain and bleeding with stocks on their feet. In pain. And it's midnight. And they could have fussed and complained. And they could have shed tears. But listen what the scripture says. That at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And they didn't sing and pray softly. They sang so that the prisoners heard them. And when they prayed, and when they sang their song, I don't know what their song was. Maybe it was late in the midnight hour. God's going to turn it around. But they prayed and they sang songs to God, and the prisoners heard it. And then a suddenly took place in their life. The scripture says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison awakening out of his sleep and seeing that the prison doors were open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we all are here. Then he called for a light and sprang in, and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou and thou thy household shall be saved. Midnight. You can empower yourself during your midnight. Instead of feeling hopeless and in despair, I know you feel like you can't figure it out. I know you feel like you can't see your way. But you can pray. You can talk to God. You can surrender that sur uh, situation to Him because, see, it's too much for you. But when it's too
too much for you. It's just right for God. So pray and surrender it to God. And don't just stop with a prayer. But do like Paul and Silas. Not only did they pray, but they praised. They gave God the glory for who he was. Because even in the midnight hour, you are not alone. God is up. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. He's right there with you in your midnight hour waiting to hear your prayer, waiting to receive your praise that you're going to lift up to him just because of who he, he is. He is God and there is no God beside him. He is God and there is no problem too difficult for him to solve. He is God and there is no pain and there is no hurt that he can't heal. He is God. If you have lack, he can provide whatever you need. If your child's addicted, he can deliver. But the way you get through midnight, the way that you cross from the midnight, that moment when one day ends and you begin the next, you got to come out of it with a prayer and a praise. And when you do, a suddenly will occur in your life. So pray when you don't feel like it. Praise when you don't feel like it. Give God a crazy praise that you don't even understand just because of who he is and watch a suddenly take place in your life. Jesus said in St. John chapter 8, verses 31 through 32, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. There is freedom and knowing God. There's freedom and knowing God's word. There's freedom and knowing that you can pray to an almighty God and he hears. There's freedom when you praise him, knowing that as you praise him, he's going to rain down blessings and a suddenly will take place in your life that will set you totally so at midnight pray and praise and watch an almighty God bring you out dear Heavenly Father I praise and I thank you God for who you are you are God and there is no other God besides thee you are God, and you are touched with the feeling of our infirmities. That means that anything that I'm going through, you know how I feel. Maybe no one else knows how I feel, but you know how I feel. And for this, I want to say thank you, because there are words that I could say, and I can't describe the depth of the pain that one might feel but you are touched with the feelings of my infirmities of the feelings of my sister and brother's infirmities God and because you know how we feel 
you are a God of mercy and you are a God of comfort. So as we come to your throne boldly, we are coming to you in our time of need. And I'm asking you, Lord, that you would touch my sister and my brother. And I'm asking you, Lord, that you would touch their heart where it's hurting and that you would cover them with your love and your peace and you would bring healing to their heart right now Father, in the name of Jesus God Father for every hung down head I pray God that you would be the lifter of their head and where they are weak I pray God that you would build them up and make them strong I'm praying God that you would wipe every tear from their eyes and I pray God that you would bless them God to turn their focus from their situation and circumstance and turn their focus towards you let them lift their eyes to the hills from whence cometh their help their help comes from you God who made heaven and earth I pray, God, that you would put a prayer in our heart and a praise in their mouth that just won't stop. I pray, God, that you would bless them to pray and praise despite the fact that they don't feel like doing it. I pray, God, that they would embrace the fact that prayer and praise is what's going to cause us suddenly to occur in their life. Let them stand on your word. Let them abide in your word, God. Let them talk and concentrate on you, God. Let them meditate in your word both day and night. Bring them out, Lord. Bring them out of this midnight. Cause a shaking to take place in their life that all the prison doors would fly open and you would set them totally free. And when you set them free, let them do like Paul and Silas, let them be a witness and give them a testimony of who you are so that someone else can be totally free. Now, God, we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor and we give you all the glory that you rightly deserve. As a matter of fact, if we had a thousand tongues, we couldn't praise you enough for your goodness. But our expectation is in you today. For your word says whatsoever things we desire when we pray, to believe that we receive it and that we shall have. So we receive your abundant blessings right now. And it's in your name that I pray. Amen and amen.